I'm going to begin this tutorial with an introduction to imaginary and complex numbers. Now an imaginary number comes about when we try to square root a negative number. And I'll just give you a, a brief overview as to why this is. If we square any number, whether it be minus 3 squared, which is 9, or 3 squared, which is 9, or minus 4 squared, which is 16, or 4 squared, which is 16. One thing that you notice is that the square of any number is always positive. Therefore, we can't have a square root of a negative number. If you try this on your calculator, say square root of minus 9, it will return an error. We can't square root a negative number using conventional maths. So this led to the introduction of something called an imaginary number. Now, the imaginary number is called j, and it represents the square root of minus 1. Now, as we've just said, we can't square root minus 1. A square root of a negative number doesn't exist because any number squared gives a positive result. This imaginary number can be used for various different reasons, and we see it used a lot in different areas of electrical engineering, from calculating reactants to determining reactive powers and so on. So it does have value in electrical engineering and electrical science. Another area where we will see this used is when we're applying the quadratic formula. If you recall from the tutorial describing how to use the quadratic formula, we said that any time we have a quadratic of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, we can use the quadratic formula to find the roots of that equation, where the quadratic formula was x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Now I'm going to give you a very straightforward example as to when this yields a complex number or when it yields an imaginary number. If I was to take the equation 0.5x squared plus 5x plus 17 and I was to input that into our quadratic formula I would get minus b so minus 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared, well b is 5, 5 squared is 25, minus 4ac, well a is a half, c is 17, 4 times a times c is 34, all divided by 2a, well 2a in this case is just 1. Next I can simplify that and I will get minus 5 plus or minus the square root well, 25 minus 34 is a negative number. It's negative 9. So what I have here is I have a complex number which has a real part. Minus 5 is a real number. And an imaginary part, square root of minus 9. I can't square root minus 9 using traditional math. So now we know what an imaginary number is. Root minus 1. Root minus 9. And we know what a complex number is, a number with a real and an imaginary component. We can begin to look at how we work with complex numbers. So when we express imaginary numbers, we simplify them so that we have a coefficient of j. So if we use some of the examples we've looked at previously, if we have root minus 9. Well, root minus 9 is the same as root 9 times root minus 1. All I've done is separate it into positive and negative roots. Well, root 9 we can do on our calculators, and that's just 3. And root minus 1 we've already said is j. Therefore, root minus 9 is exactly the same as saying 3j. If we were to have root minus 36, we can separate that into root 36, root minus 1, so we're separating it into positive and negative components. Well, root 36 is just 6, and root minus 1 is just j. We'll just do one more of these. If we have the square root of minus 81, that's the same as the square root of 81 times the square root of minus 1. 
which is the same as 9j. The way that we eliminate a j is by squaring it. If we ever see the term j squared, well, j squared is root minus 1, all squared. Well, squaring a square root is just going to leave us with j squared equals minus 1. So we do have a means of getting rid of imaginary numbers by squaring them.